everybody, Spirit Otter here, and welcome back to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. So last time, we cross-examined a parrot, and then Edgeworth uh, got declared innocent, and he admitted to a crime 15 years ago. Oh, boy. So, basically, we gotta take it on an emotional roller coaster. So this time, uh, we will continue this case. Let's get moving. Will the witness state his name and profession? Miles Edgeworth, I'm a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Edgeworth, 15 years ago you mistakenly killed your father, Gregory Edgeworth. Is this correct? It is correct. Then testify this matter to the court. And Edgeworth was telling me about his dream yesterday and noticed something. The detail didn't quite fit. That'll be the key if... But if only I can get it to work. Please, please, please. That day I had gone to the courtroom to observe one of my father's trials. As we went to leave, an earthquake struck, trapping us in an elevator. My father, Mr. Yogi, lost their composure and began to argue. Just then something heavy fell at my feet. I picked it up and threw it at Mr. Yogi. I wanted to stop them fighting. A moment later, there was a single gun shot that a scream. It was a terrible scream. I remember it to this day. That is all. Uh, nothing sticking out at me. Till now, you thought this memory was a dream. I was stuck in the elevator for five hours. The oxygen in that elevator ran out. I'd lost my memory of the events. Bah! Same claim as Mr. Yogi has made. Very well. Let's write your cross-examination, please. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to just press on every statement. What was... What was the trial your father was involved in that day? I don't remember things cl very clearly. Only two things. Now my father lost, and Mr. Valcaro was a prosecuting attorney. But, Mr. Valcaro, you were handling that case? It was 15 years ago. I don't remember the details. That was when Edgeworth pointed out the problem with Von Karma's evidence. So there were three people, including yourself, trapped in the that elevator. Yes, myself, my father, and Yanni Yogi. We were fine at first. But then this time passed, no one came to help. What did you do then? I was a nine-year-old boy at the time. What could I do? I was scared, trembling in the corner. But then... What was it? A pistol. I assumed it was the bailiff's, Yoni Yogi's. A safety must have come off when it fell from his holster. He picked it up, then what happened next? Did you know it was a pistol when you threw it? I think I knew. I knew it, w I knew it was dangerous. But the air was getting so thick I panicked. So you're saying that you threw the pistol at Mr. Yogi? I was in a daze. The gun fired once. Yes. I think after I threw it, I lost consciousness. Since then, they backed over in my head every day. Oh. Gun saw sharp in that horrible scream. The scream? Hold up. Let me just go through the case file here.
Oops. Oopsies. Give me a sec, people. There you go. Wait a minute. The murder weapon was fired twice. Hmm. Let me just check a few things. Hello! What is this? Hmm. Hopefully, uh, this will let me do this. Objection! Yes! Are you sure only you, you only heard one gunshot? Yes, I'm sure of that. I heard one gunshot in the screen. Then everything faded. I was unconscious until the rescuers came. I see. But that doesn't make any sense! Look at this file one more time. This plainly contradicts the witness's testimony. You do enjoy dragging out that file, don't you? Don't accept this as evidence unless you can tell us what page it's on. Which page contradicts Miles' testimony? Uh, let me look at it again. Ah, uh, the second one. Look at the victim data in this file. It says quite plainly, the murder weapon was fired twice. <laughs> Miles Edgeworth only heard one gunshot. Yet the murder weapon was fired twice. The first shot was an accidental firing, and the pistol was thrown. So who fired the remaining shot? Sorry about that. Let's get moving. Hmm. Was there perhaps another shooter that fired the second shot? Your Honor, as I'm sure you're aware, this incident occurred 15 years ago. The evidence is dated. The pistol did fire twice. However, we do not know when the second shot was fired. It might have been fired the day before the incident. There is no proof the second shot had anything to do with this incident. What? I see, I see. You do have a point. You do have a point, Mr. Wright. The murder weapon was fired twice, as we heard. One of those shots was fired by the defendant, a boy at the time. Do you have any proof that the other shot fired has something to do with this case? Yes! Your Honor, I think I will be able to show you proof. What? Impossible. Now, Mr. Von Karma, save your surprise for after you've seen the evidence. Very well, Mr. Wright, show us your proof. Do you have evidence that the second uh, firing of the pistol is related to this incident? Look at this photograph. This is a photograph of the scene of the crime 15 years ago. I can see that the victim lying there is Gregory Edgeworth. This proves that the murder weapon was fired twice at the time of the incident. This photo proves it. So let me get this straight. This photo proves two shots were fired. Where? Your Honor, please, get a clue! Alright. Right here. It should be obvious. The contradiction is here. I see a bullet hole in the door. Your Honor! Gregory Edgeworth was killed by the sh by a shot from the pistol. If there was also a bullet hole in the elevator door. We, we also know the murder weapon was fired twice. Thus, someone other than Edgeworth fired that second shot. 
Order! Order! Mr. Wright, what are you driving at? It's simple, Your Honor. At the time of the incident, two shots were fired. One went into Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, the elevator door. Remember the defendant lost consciousness after the shot rang out. In conclusion, we must agree that the second shot was fired by someone else. Mr. Wright, but who could that someone be? A murderer, of course. I knew I should have stepped in before your wild fantasies got out of hand. Mr. Wright, look once more at the DL6 case file. Look closely. Try the case summary page. The case summary on the page one. Look at what's written here. Not a single clue was found on the scene. The pistol had indeed been fired two times. The other bullet would have been discovered on the scene. He, has, he does have a point. The second bullet has never been found. Why? Because the second bullet does not exist. The bullet that claimed Gregory Edgeworth's life was fired by his own son. This is the truth that matters. The whole truth. It was undoubtedly something else that the bullet... Uh, that made the bullet in that door. The, the bullet hole in that door. Order! Order! I will have order! Mr. Wright, this has proven one thing to us quite clearly. The murder weapon was fired at the time of the incident. However, Mr. Von Karma says the second bullet was not found. It's highly unlikely that the police merely overlooked the second bullet. So all we have is the single shot bullet fired. I'm afraid I'll have to discount the defense's claims. Tisk tisk tisk. I praise the judge for his wisdom in this matter. Gah, how did this happen? I don't believe that the second bullet didn't exist. Was I wrong? Have I been wrong about this whole incident? What are you gonna do, Nick? Why aren't you raising an objection? I'm sorry, Maya. What? It looks like I was wrong. Nick! If the second bullet wasn't there, then my conjectures are all for nothing. No. But you said you'd do it, Nick. You said you'd get Edgeworth declared innocent. I'm sorry. It's just when I saw that photograph, I thought that two shots had been fired. I was so certain of it. I thought I'd won. I thought there was another person, someone who fired the killing shot. But now, was I wrong to think that it could be that simple? This case has stood unsolved for 15 years. Nick. Well, it seems that we finally cleared up this incident. Only one bullet was found at the scene of the crime. That shot was fired by Miles Edgeworth. Precisely. Alas, you... I would like to ask one thing of Miles Edgeworth before passing my bullet. Have you been paying attention to the trial thus far? Yes, Your Honor. Do you have any objections? No. No, I do not. So you killed your own... Your father, though it was not your intention. Yes, I did. Oh no. He's, he's confessing. Very well. The statute of limitations of the mother of graduate Edgeworth runs out today. Therefore, I must pronounce the verdict on the defendant today, right here. Right now! Indeed. Does anyone have any objections? I've been here before. It's just like my first day in court. There's so many things I know I should be saying. My mind's gone blanks. I can't find the words. I have an objection. objection. Your Honor, I object. Tisk, tisk, tisk. Mr. Wright, on what grounds do you object to him? Oof. Nick? I don't know. This case is perfect. Oh no. Gah. It must exist. The second bullet. What? What did you just say? Nothing. Second bullet must exist. Where? Someone took it. As he's waiting, he's not going to produce any answers from Mr. Wright. Wait, Your Honor. I, uh, the second bullet. It uh, exists. What? 
We just have proof that it does not exist. I realize that, Your Honor. I'm Grassman here. It's just that someone took it from the scene of the crime. That's what happened. But who? The murderer! The murderer? Then tell us who this murderer... Who is this murderer? Just thinking about that one. If the criminal took the second bullet, why would he? Huh? First of all, how would he have found it? It's not that easy to find a stray bullet, Mr. Wright. Was there some pressing need for the murderer to... Uh, the murderer didn't need it. Why would he have spent time looking for the stray bullet? I haven't got a clue. What's wrong, Mr. Wright? Uh, um... Bah! The murderer had no reason to take that bullet. You don't want to admit it, but it's true. Urk. He had to take it. Had to take it? The murderer? What does that mean? You're thinking too normal. Think crazy! Don't think why the bullet was taken. Think why the bullet had to be taken. Yes, Your Honor. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, well, the murderer had no intention of taking the bullet from the scene. But the murderer had to take that bullet. Had to, Mr. Wright? What do you mean? Well, for instance... For instance, what? Uh, maybe the bullet hit the, uh, murderer? The bullet hit the murderer? I'm just saying, for instance. I mean, if it hit you, you would have to take it with you, wouldn't you? It's not like you could perform surgery right there. You know? Wait a second. I was just talking off the top of my head, but what if that's really what happened? Let me get this straight. So at the time of the murder, the murderer himself was shot. And he left with the second bullet still inside. Thus leaving only one bullet at the scene of the crime. Uh, yes. I guess that's how it would work, yes. But there's a problem with that. The other two people rescued from that elevator, Miles Edgeworth and Yanayogi, were both unharmed. So that would mean the murderer came from outside, yes. The two men fought. The two men fight inside the elevator. Trying to stop them, the boy picks up the pistol and at his feet and throws it. The pistol discharges the bullet. The bullet goes through the door and hits the murderer outside. The boy loses consciousness. The murderer then opens the elevator doors and sees the men inside. Hmm. Mr. Wright, you're truly the most unpredictable defense attorney I've known. Can you... I can tell you're grasping, and yet I cannot deny the possibility of what you say. What are you saying? Deny it! Deny it! No one involved with the incident was wounded. There was no murderer. Hmm. No one was wounded at the time of the incident. He's right. I can't think of anyone. Hey, Nick. Huh? I just thought of something. Really crazy. Crazy? Remember what Mr. Grossberg said yesterday? Gregory Edgeworth dealt a blow to his perfect trial record. Wow. Must have been quite a shock for Von Karma. He took a vacation for several months after that, you see. It's quite an unusual event for the man. That was the first and last vacation he's taken in many years of, in his many years of prosecuting. If Von Karma didn't take that vacation because of shock. He took it because he was injured. Which would mean... It could only mean one thing. He's the mur He was the murderer of the L6. He was the man who shot Gregory Edgeworth. It was Von Karma! Oh, man! What's wrong, Mr. Wright? You seem dazed. Uh, no, Your Honor. Well? You got the... In... I did the possibility that the murder came from outside. Can you give us the name of your suspect? Uh-oh. Should I come out and say it now? SAY IT! <laughs> your Honor! There is a suspect. One lone suspect. 
Well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who is your suspect? But, uh, my hands are shaking. F but what? Von Karma! Von Karma! <laughs> and this music is playing. He is smirking, but oh man, I got you, dude. You are going down. Me, the prosecutor. The Evon Karma, the prosecutor sitting right there? Bah! Don't object? Hmm. I see no need, Your Honor. Well, this is ridiculous. I'll burst with my objection. Okay, bleh. Because you took a vacation for several months at. For several months, starting the day after the incident. You pride yourself on your perfect record. Why would you take such a long vacation without re any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal from an injury after the incident? Fascinating. Prove it. I would need a surgeon, no? Where would I under where or did I undergo the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him hit testify. Er Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. Edgeworth? I know Von Karma, perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. Probably didn't undergo surgery. That would leave the doctor as a witness. Urgh, nobody's that perfect. So what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out himself? That's insane! No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait. What does that mean? That the bullet has to be somewhere, but where? It's still in him! Well, Mr. Wright, can you produce evidence to prove that I was shot? Alright, Von Karma, I'll prove it. I'll even use ev evidence. I know how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma was shot is... I know this scene, and this is priceless. Von Karma is perfect. He wouldn't risk surgery, leaving an evidence trail. So then I ask, where is that bullet now? I think it's unlikely that Von Karma would perform surgery on himself. You, you don't mean. Oh, yes, I do. There is a possibility that that bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible for all these years? Well, there's only one way to find out. We could use this metal detector. Well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we'll find. I refuse! You refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you? Oh, it's still there. Order, order, order! Your Honor, the defense requests we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said we have to end this right here, right now. <laughs> Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know. We have to give it a shot. Well, hello! It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma. You! It was you! I was afraid this would happen. And so I remained silent. Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, it has nothing to do with this incident. What? I was shot in the shoulder long before DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. You son of a bitch! But 
Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It's you who must prove something here, Mr. Wright. Not I. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any of the DL6 evidence. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. With no proof you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No! I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Von Karma. What? You were so close. One day away from freedom. You see, I have proof. What? Who would have thought that you would have dug your own grave trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to DL6 incident. Here's my final proof. Thank you, Maya. That's a bullet? Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This was taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first, first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from the gun are marked with a uh, weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon the bullet, which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One bullet removed from Gregory Edwards' heart. The other in Mr. Von Car, the other Mr. Von Karma is buried. Is the bullet buried in your shoulder? We could analyze both bullets. If the markings. Then if the markings match. We would know both bullets have been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you will let us remove that bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to, uh, to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma? Whoa, dude, he is losing his mind. That scream. I've heard that scream before. Wait, I know. Help, I can't breathe. Quiet, I say quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air. I'll stop you! Stop breathing my air! Get away! Get away from my father! Oh... A scream I heard in the elevator 15 years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed! But Mr. Von Karma? Oh. So it was you. Whoa, dude! You and my father are my curse! You, you and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with a penalty on my record! And you, you left a scar on my shoulder that would never fade! I'll bury you! Bury you with my bare hands! Death! Death! Dude, stop! Fifteen years earlier. Mr. Chief Prosecutor, I am sorry. Von Karma, it's not like you to make this kind of error. I never thought that Edward would be the one to catch you. I was careless! I'm sorry, but you would have to be penalized. Cover for you in the past, but not this time. 
Edgeworth! It was a shock like none I have ever known. Me? Penalized? It took an hour for me to... Hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. It was in the court records room. Must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out in the hall and felt my way to the elevator. Pressed the button and nothing happened. Then, there was a noise. I was in pain. Horrible burning pain in my shoulder. But the lights came back on. The elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside lying unconscious from the oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was destiny. From last moment, in his last moment, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Tis, tis, tis. Who would have thought another man would come? Would have come through and opened that elevator door. Judge, what? What are you doing? Doing the job. Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now, end it. Very well. Yeesh. Okay, buddy. It appears we have come to the very long end of this maze. Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth? Yes, Your Honor? You are innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. Maybe now you can sleep. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. That is all. Court is adjourned. We did it! Did you see his face? Well, Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside he's cru- You crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. <laughs> I was pretty close, though. I'm pretty sure we had had it. I know. I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now it's- It's all just a good memory. So it's finally over, Edgeworth. Right? Yeah? I- I'm not sure how to say this. I know, I know. Try- thank you. I see. Thank you, Right. You're welcome. I think you could have done better than that. Oof. Sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. No kidding. <laughs> you gotta learn, Edgeworth. Dear, dear. What? Amazing, Belle, you pulled through like I thought you would. I'll never forget this. I owe you one, Belle. Tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth, you should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm, I see. <clears throat> Whoop! <laughs> I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it a little at a time. You get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edward this unguarded. Hey, y'all! Lada! You were great in there. Thank you. Yo, Edward, congrats! Uh, thank you all very much. I knew you were innocent from the start, of course. No, you didn't. Just look at you. You wouldn't even stick your hand in the cookie jar if there was no one there. You were the witness in the first day of the trial, weren't you? Yeah, well, by let bygones be got bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lada? Oh, me? Oh, I went back to college. 
I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer pretty quick. Really? That's too bad. Huh? Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick. My life is over. Oh, God. What happened this time? Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick. I'm not long for this world. Uh, you don't look sick. It's Kaya. She, she's gonna live in Paris. Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind. Larry, Larry. Yo, Hedgy, there you are. Uh, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy. Here, a little gift for me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual from you. Hey, Buds, you come to, along tonight, too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's stupid to question me. He says treat. That's not police talk for prison food, right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right? Yeah. What's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Oh, well, yeah, that's not, not strange. People give money to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh? It's a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. 38, exactly. Larry! <laughs> Nick! Wasn't that the exact amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth at school? 38. No. No, Larry! It was you! Why are you so surprised about... What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? Doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was so bored he came into school anyway. Then he saw the money lying there, and the rest was history. But I was never good at history, hey. <laughs> Edward, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back at our school. Something smells, it's usually the butts. I know, I know! Really right, I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth? Hmm? You should have told me! Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago. Don't you think the stature of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Grr. Where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did? Well, I call you a goody two-shoes to the extreme. Yeah, and you get so worked up easily, too. Death? Death sentence for both of you! Man, if I had only known I'd become a prosecutor. Same goes for me. Only the other way around. The longest time I thought I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I gave a prosecutor the impot to punish myself. I know the truth. I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth. Want to switch, right? Hey, y'all. Line up. I'll take a photo. Hey, photo time. Let's go. After that dinner on me. Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Although, Edgeworth was still in detention. Uh, oh, what the heck, extra long episode today. Not, not that I can uh, stop it here. This is the uh, finale. Whoa, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's still only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Hmm? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. 
I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth too. I wanted to help you, but I couldn't. I was useless. So I decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Bye, Nick. Oh, bye. What time is it? Gah! First trains before the mountains. Has already left to the station. I guess I'm too late. Hey! Nick! Maya! So... So, you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And... I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait! What? never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yes. I heard her only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped Mr. Grossberg and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I didn't do anything! All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence you helped. Evidence? Show my ass of a... Dude, you got this bullet! A bullet? Von Karma was convicted. He was convinced he took all the evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. It was this bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training and come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. So, bye. Bye. to cry right now. Thanks, Nick. And so my story ends. Time to turn a new page. Saying goodbye to the novice defense attorney I once was. Now a new story begins. The same old crazy cast of characters. Ha! Don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Is so right? Perhaps you'd like to rethink your cla that claim. Er, yes, Your Honor. Uh-oh. I got a bad feeling about this. Ha-ha! <laughs> well, that's it. Oh, goodness. Hey, pal. Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a Happy New Year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop! Detective Gumshoe! <laughs> And he hung his head low and went right back outside. Oh, poor guy. I don't like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? Nope. That's just Edgeworth. He's reserved. He's very reserved. Oh, uh, basically, we're gonna catch up with everybody. Huh? Nick? I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. Miss is a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you would call a deep, cheap date. Oh, well, right now she's in Hawaii, yeah. Oh, gosh. Not another model! Who? Right? Yeah, I remember him. I heard he's been busy lately. You know, not to ring my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. Screw you, dude! Felix Wright. Hmm. Ah, oh, the defense attorney who I wrote that affidavit for, yes. 
Oh, you should know. I've taken over management of the Gatewater Hotel recently. Should you be in the area, please stop by. <clears throat> hmm? Oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright? Ah, oh, yes, Mina's understanding, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. I haven't seen him of late. Ah, oh, the days of my youth. Like the scent of a fresh lemon, you see. Phoenix Wright? He an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can't be a star with a name like Phoenix. Did you know that- Oh, God, not again! Lady! Please slow down! I like this music, by the way. Oh, I'm pleased to announce the Pink Princess is a hit. I sure owe that Mr. Wright a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any of kids' dreams, you know? Aw, such a nice guy. I love Will Powers, he's awesome. Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. Sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but I didn't have any time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. I wonder what kind of place she's living at, anyway. Huh. <laughs> right? Who's that? You wanna talk? Let's talk Pink Princess, alright? But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day, and I saw her. The one inside the Pink Princess suit. Ugh, what a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy of my tender age. <laughs> yeah, I remember, right? That lawyer guy. Huh? Me? I'm in training to become a paranormal photographer. You know that picture I took of everyone? Well, just behind them, there's a ghost! For real? Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Oh, Lada. Oh, there is a ghost. It's Mia. Oh, and Gumshoe is throwing the confetti. Oh, such a good picture. Oh. This is such a good game. Wait, what? Well then! Uh, thank y'all for watching. Um, I'll see y'all next time for Rise from the Ashes! The bonus case in this- in- in this game. So I'll see y'all then. Bye!